Hey, my name is Daniel from the Facilitator School and we just received this beautiful looking award for having the most like template in the Miroverse, which is basically Miro's uh, community library of templates. And we absolutely not create this ourselves because we thought it's cool. But what I want to tell you about is that publishing this template was a really great success for us. Not only because we reach a lot of people and got a lot of cool feedback, which I think already is pretty nice, but also because we actually got customers and participants for our course that found us through this template. Now what I want to do in this video here is I want to give you a couple of insightful tips and secrets on how you can create a winning Miroverse template and potentially kick us off the throne. If that's the case, I will absolutely send this award your way. But I'm a man of action, so let's head to the desk and start learning. So tip number one is make it simple. You will be surprised if you take a look at the most used templates in the Miroverse then actually some of them are quite simple in their nature. So for example, second most used template is the Emotions Wheel Icebreaker. If you look at it at face value, it's just a circle within a circle and then there are a couple emotions around it. Then for example, if we scroll down a little bit, we have the Mario Kart Sprint Retrospective. That's a simple template. And then also this effective meetings template here is just a couple of frames with a bit of text to give kind of a structure for an effective meeting. The great thing about keeping it simple is it increases like the ease of use for people so they more easily can adopt the template, but also saves you a lot of time as a template creator. Let's nail this point home by taking a look at our character mix and match icebreaker. This actually took us just half a day to create. If you look at it, you will see there are like illustrations around. There's a bit of space in the middle to place those illustrations and literally there's just like two paragraphs uh, to describe what people need to do. So in essence, it's quite simple. But what also makes it work is something that we're going to discuss in tip number two. Tip number two is make it visual. If we come back to the character mix and match icebreaker template, I think the reason why people like to use this is because it's very, very visual. You have all these illustrations that you can pull together and it really leverages the strengths of having an online whiteboard. Another template that really brings this point home is the reflection island. So you see here, there's space for a team to reflect on things and you have all of these nice illustrations around here that guide you where the start is, but also kind of uh, help to create a more fun experience while achieving the same outcome that you could have with a more boring template. But if something is more fun to use, people will use it more often and also they have just a much better experience. And the best way to make something more visual is by adding fitting illustrations. And that might be more easier than you think. Let me give you two things that you can do. First of all, within Miro, go to the left side, click on the plus here and then search for image. Then you have the images and icon app click on that, open it. And here, if you click on icons, for example, you can uh, search for uh, cloud. And then you will see you have a lot of clouds that you can pick from that you can potentially add to your board. The second thing that you can do is uh, go to Google and search for open source, or like this, open source illustration library. And here you'll find a lot of different illustration libraries that you can use, often by just giving a little bit of credit. But they give you access to very professional illustrations that you can use to really spice up your templates. Tip number three is make it structured. If your board is well structured, it really helps to guide the attention of the users and participants of that board to see the right things at the right time. And this is a bit of a pitfall with Miro because Miro is an endless canvas. You can zoom in, you can go left and right, but because of that, people can get easily lost on a big board where content is all over the place. So I have two actionable tips for you to create more structure in your template. The first one is to structure your board from top to bottom and left to right regarding the flow of information. And there's a simple reason for that. If we consume books and websites and recipes, all those things that we might do daily, we always consume them top to bottom, left to right. So keep that in mind for your template as well because people are used to this. 
The second thing is hierarchy. Add hierarchy to your board to make some content stand out that is more important. And the easiest way that you can do that is by uh, increasing the font size of some elements, the font weight, and also to use colors. And there's a great template that we can take a look at to see both of these things in action. And this is the ecosystem mapping by customer experience company. If you look at the template, you can immediately see that the first thing jumps to your mind or jumps to your eye is the title here. Ecosystem mapping, it's in the top left. It's one of the biggest items. And then I have the subtitle here. Then the next thing I see here is start here, background. An ecosystem map is a visualization, ta-da-ta, and then it goes down here. Really easy structure, really helps me to start where I should start to understand how to use this template. And you see here, for example, also how the different font sizes I use and font weight to make things stand out. And then also, for example, here in the middle, this icon together with the color immediately shows me, oh, this is something I need to pay attention to. So this is a great example of creating structure on your board to make it more easy to use and understandable. Tip number four is make it delightful. What do I mean by that? So what I mean is that in the best case, when people open your template, they think, wow, this looks well made. And I want to stress why this is important. Many people that use templates use them with other people because Miro is a collaborative platform. So they put a little bit of their reputation at stake because people then join the session. And the thing is, if the template or whatever they created looks a little bit crooked and everything, then yeah, people lose the trust and they think like, oh, this is going to be a bad meeting or a bad workshop. So having a great looking template already does so much work and makes people look more good in front of their colleagues. And that's actually quite important, even though many people don't talk about this. So let's take a look at one template here, which I think really does this well. And then I'm going to give you three actionable tips. So this is the template here. This is the journey map template by Essence. And then if you look at it, it just looks beautiful. Like all these nice kind of uh, illustrations here and then the color profile. And let's quickly kind of untangle what makes this work so well. So the first one is the color palette. And here my tip is, and that's kind of a method that they are using as well and we have used a lot, is to use the tint and shade method. What I mean by that is that you're going to pick kind of a dominant color that could be maybe a color that's close to your brand color or just something that fits to the theme of the template. And then you're going to pick tints, which are basically lighter colors of those, and then shades, which are darker colors. And we can see this in action with this template here. So for example, if you look, of course, the dominant color is kind of a green tone. And then here in the background, you see a very light color. Then for this title here, you have a bit of a darker, but then the word overview, which is maybe the important word here, it's even darker. So you have three colors that come to play here. The same here with this kind of scenario card, just a combination of colors, but it immediately looks nice. It creates again a great hierarchy. And the way that you can do this yourself is that there is a kind of a web design framework. That's kind of a tip, it's something that we used. It's called Tailwind, so just search for Tailwind CSS colors and here you have really nice color palettes. You pick lighter and darker colors here and try to combine them nicely. Another thing, and I will link this down in the description, is we also created a color palette at a facilitator school here that basically puts together four really nice colors that also fit the natural color of the sticky notes in Miro. So if you want to have that, just go in the description below and then you can download this template here to get started. The second thing that really helps to make something look more delightful is consistent spacing. And you just want to have consistent spacing between all of your elements because it's kind of the same as moving into an apartment, looking at a kitchen, and then you think like, hmm, something is off with that kitchen because there's some crooked lines, it immediately gives you a bad feeling. The same is with a template. If the lines are straight, if the uh, spacing is consistency, this just gives you a look like there's more harmony in that template. And one tip I can give uh, here to you is, let's say you move an element to a side, then quickly uh, create a rectangle and just uh, place it to the left side. And then when you want to space it, just duplicate it to the other side. And we can actually see that we can improve the consistency of this template here by moving that one a little bit to the right here as well. And then of course you can do this for all of the sides and that is an easy way to keep things consistent. 
And the third thing, which is going to be a quick one, is to use font combinations. If we just look at this part of the template here, I just think, oh, this looks nice. And I think the reason is because here in the title, we have this font, EB Garamond, and then the text has a different font. But both of them play well together, makes this just looking a little bit better, a little bit more designed, but it's something very easy to implement. So try this out in your templates as well. And tip number five, the final tip is make your progress public. What do I mean by that? I mean that once you have kind of your template together, like the rough idea on the board, consider sharing it with other people that could be, for example, your colleagues, or maybe just think about placing it on LinkedIn and seeing what happens, because you might be surprised. There are two big benefits. First of all, what you will see is that people jump on the uh, opportunity to give you feedback and ideas, and that really helps you to kind of hone down the template, remove maybe some parts and highlight what really works, and maybe implement some of the ideas before publishing. The second thing is it already builds a little bit of a hype and momentum. So you already have people waiting to use the template without you having even published it. So that's pretty cool. And I show you this in action here. So here you can see a post that I made three years ago about the character mix and match icebreaker template, where I basically showed in a video how it works. And then I said to people, yeah, let me know if we should publish this as an open template. A bit of a sneaky thing because I was 80% sure of already publishing it, but I wanted to have a bit of validation. But what happened here is like a lot of people tuned in and said like, yeah, I want to have it. And this is of course great because it motivates you as a creator because you think like, oh, there are some people actually that, that want to have this. And then uh, you already have some users. And the second time this happened to me when I just shared my progress publicly was when I was thinking about this idea of a non-linear roadmap. And I shared a previous post and then after that post got some attention, I made this post here and said like, hey, I'm considering making this template for Miro. This is roughly how it looks. So this was kind of my MVP, my first idea. And then I asked people to, to let me know if that's interesting. And this had over 1000 likes. And I hope this doesn't come off as yeah, me showing off, but let me tell you, people are really interested to get involved if they have the chance to give feedback and to, to just get something for free. Uh, that's also, of course, a, a big component, but yeah, I can really recommend you to make your work on the template publicly and just see what happens. The last step that you need to take once you have the feeling your template is good enough, and I say specifically because it doesn't have to be perfect, is to publish it. The way that you do that is that you simply go to mirrorverse.com slash submission and then publish that thing to the world to use. And I would be really curious, like if you publish a template using these tips, put it in the comments below so I can take a look. Also do let me know if you have any questions, I will be active in the comment section. So really interested to engage with you. And yeah, I hope you found some of these tips actionable to use. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Danny from the Facilitator School and maybe see you around in another video.